What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that allows you to quickly create building exterior models inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this add-on got posted about a few days ago on Blender Nation. And so basically what it is, it's a free add-on that contains a number of different building tools designed to create buildings inside of Blender. Um, so um, you can download this by going to that site and then you can click on the button right here in order to open up this page. And so the building tools alpha is um, created by, so this tool is created by Rangian Zero and Lucky Catum, so their information is down below, but you can download this for free and you can install it inside of Blender. So in order to do that, they give you instructions on this page, basically you just download the file from up here, you just download the zip file and then just install it and you're good to go. So I wanna thank these guys for making this available for free. I will note this is still in alpha, and so that means that obviously it's still, um, development hasn't been complete on it, it can be a little bit unstable at times, but it's a great tool for quickly creating buildings. And so let's take a look at what it can do. And by the way, I recommend watching this video that they have on this page. It gives you a great overview of what it can do. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of information on how to get started with it. So when you first install it, if you tap the N key, there's going to be a um, menu over here that you can click on so that you can access this. And so in order to start, what you need to do is you need to create a floor plan. So you can just click on this button right here, and this is gonna open the floor plan creation tool. And notice how there's a number of different kinds of floor plans you can create. So you can create a circular floor plan, um, you can create a composite where you can have ins and outs and other things like that on this building as well. Um, you can also do like an H-shaped, so you can have little wings over here. Then there's also a random generator. So if you just wanna randomly generate buildings, this is a great way to do that. So randomly, random generation can be really good if you're creating like games or other things like that. Um, but what you need to do first is you need to start by creating your floor plan. Note that this tool is basically designed to create the exteriors. It's not really an interior modeling tool, though we can talk about some of those in the future. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work with this. Note that if you click off of this, sometimes if you tap the F9 key, you can get this window back. Sometimes you can't. I haven't really figured out why sometimes it comes back and sometimes it doesn't. It's better to just get this set up while you're working on it so that it creates what you want it to create. Um, but if you do accidentally click off of this key to get it back, you may or may not get it. And so once you've created your floor plan, what you can do with this tool is you can hit the tab key to go into edit mode and then you'll be able to use all of these mesh tools. So if I hit the tab key right here, you can see how this takes me into edit mode. And now I have the options to add things like floors and roofs and other things um, that add more detail to my building. So for example, if I wanted this to be a multiple story building, I could click on add floors and this tool will add floors in here. And I'm going to adjust my screencast keys really quickly quick just so this isn't in the middle of this menu so I'll just move these up for right now um, but you can see how what this does um, when you add floors is you can adjust the number of floors in your buildings dynamically so you can see how I can click and drag this or I can type in whatever value I want so if I wanted to create like a 10-story building something like that I could do that but then most of these other things are adjustable as well so you can adjust the thickness of your slab between floors as well as the outset so how far out it goes so if you want your slab to hang out a little bit, you can, or you can turn this off in order to make it kind of flush with your building. It's kind of up to you. Um, you can also adjust the floor to floor heights in here. So you can adjust this by typing in a value or by clicking and dragging this. You can turn the slabs off completely if you want to create a building like this one that isn't going to have um, any kind of slabs. So if you're creating like a curtain wall building or something like that, you could turn your slabs off. I'm going to leave them on for right now. And so once you do this, what you can do is you can go in and you can start adding detail to your building. One thing I will point out about this is at the moment, um, depending on how complex my model is, um, sometimes it'll crash. So I do recommend after you add something like your floors, before you go to the next step, that you save your model. And so what you can do now is you can come in here and let's say for example that you wanted to add a roof. You could just click on your roof and then just click on add roof. So what this does is this has a tool set for automatically creating different roofs, roofs in here. So you can select different types. So you could have a flat roof, you could have a gable roof, 
Um, in this case, it doesn't like the gable roof because of the shape of the roof. So that may be more of like a rectangular building type thing. Um, but you can definitely adjust this in order to get different kinds of roofs in here. You can also adjust things like the thickness as well as the outset. So how far out it hangs as well as how tall your roof is. So depending on your building type, there's a lot of different options for different roofs that you can create. So again, remember to save once you've created your roof. And then let's say we wanted to add some balconies. So I could either select one of these and click add balcony in order to add one in here. Or I think that I can come in here and I can select multiple different faces like this just by doing a shift click, clicking add balcony in here. Let's see if it'll do that or not. Yeah, you can add multiple balconies in here. And what you can do with these is you can actually adjust them so you can see how you can make adjustments to your balconies in here. I will note because there's multiple balconies in here, um, it's taking longer to make the changes. These changes work a lot faster if you just have an individual balcony like this one. So if I was to add a balcony here, you can see how it'll let me live adjust things like the width, and then also the slab height on the balcony as well. So you can click and drag that up and down. Um, so these are all adjustable and you can actually move them along your face just like this. Um, your railing can be turned on and off depending on what you're trying to do. And you can also adjust the density of your posts in your assembly. So that's probably a little bit heavy. But you can see how you can adjust these and there's also different railing types that you can put in here. So if you want this to be like a horizontal rail, you can do that. If you want it to be like a glass rail, you can also do that. So in addition, you can also add doors, windows, and stairs. So for example, let's say I wanted to show a stair walking up to this. You can see how I can quickly add a stair in here with a number of different steps. And then you can adjust like the width, you can adjust the X, Y offsets. So this is really great for Qu um, quickly creating things like stairs inside of your model. So I will know it's not necessarily like a detailed stair creation tool in the sense that while you can add landings and other things like that, if you're trying to do like super complex um, architectural stairs, you might need to find something else in order to do that. But overall, I think it's a great tool for quickly creating and quickly adding context. So you could add, you could detail out a city with this tool really easily. So there's also tools in here if you want to create like uh, like doors. You can add a door and then you can adjust things like your frame depth, your frame width or thickness. Other things like that in here as well. So how far back into your building it goes. Then you can also move it along your face by adjusting all of these different settings. So you can also adjust if it's a double door, you can add an arch over the top. So lots of different options for quickly adding things like that. You can also add like glass panes on the inside of it. So if you wanted there to be a glass door, you could do that as well. And so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this again. Um, and then I'm also going to add a couple windows. So in order to add some windows, all I need to do is just click on the face where I want to add the windows and I can just click on the button for add windows. So notice how right now this is bringing multiple different windows in. So you can adjust the count of windows that are going to be on the face. And you can also adjust things like your frame thickness, um, the depth of your frame inside of your wall. So if you wanted these to be recessed, you could do that. You can also adjust if there's arches or not. So just lots of options in here that you can adjust in order to create different things. I love how quick you can create things like these louvers, for example. So adding all of these things is really quick and really adjustable. Now I will say, I don't know that there's a way to go back once you've created these and adjust these. Um, I'm sure somebody will be along to tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't know that there's a way to really kind of work back into the process of where you created those. So I think once they're created, they're kind of done. Um, but somebody let me know if that's not correct. And then the last thing I want to hit on just a bit is the material tools. So when you first open this up, you may not see the material tools, but they're right here. And what they do is they basically created a number of different face maps inside of this tool. So what that means is that means that let's say I wanted to add something to my walls. Well, I can click on the group for the walls and then I can click the select button in order to select just those walls. And so because of that, what I can do is I can then add a material just to the walls. So let's say I have a material like this darker brown color right here. I can add this material to that. So you do have to be a little bit careful with what you have selected when you do that. And also you're going to have to UV map it. So that's 
Otherwise, you may get some kind of weird results in here. And so probably the easiest way to do a quick UV map in here is you can just right click and then just go down to UV unwrap faces and do a cube projection. So if you do a cube projection, what that's gonna do is that's gonna do a quick map. And if I go to my UV editing, you can see how that's just very quickly created a cube map in here. And then I can add a material like this brick material. So probably what I would do is I would scale this up so that my brick doesn't look ridiculously large and then within my layout I would just go in I would just select these walls and for these walls I would assign this brick material so and as you can see you do need to go back into your UV editing and kind of make some changes over here to make it so your brick isn't super big but notice how we were able to quickly add that projection using the cube projection there are more complex ways that we could add materials as well but just note that this is creating those maps so that you can quickly add materials inside of your models in blender and so for example what we could do is we could come in here and we could select our window material and then we could just add a new material for our windows so we'll just click the plus button right here we'll add a new material and we'll call it a glass bsdf shader we'll go ahead and assign that to this material but you can see how because these are all mapped making the changes to this is really easy obviously there's some things we would need to adjust about the way that our glass looks but for right now you can see how adding that shader can be a really quick part of the process so by using these face maps in here you can start adding materials to different faces really quickly without having to go back in and make a whole bunch of different changes so that's where I'm going to end this video. I would love to hear from you guys what you think about this add-on, if you're using it for anything. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.